Do you want to do the intro? I do. do. I'll okay. do. I'll do the intro. Go for it. The intro is Lindsay Flanagan, superstar, <laughs> A6 marathoner, and all around couch friend of ours. So <laughs> this is going to get weird. Yeah, because we. I feel like it's a different kind of friend. Like we we could sit on a couch with Lindsay. True. And chit chat, and the conversation's good. Like it was post Olympic trials. Uh, when we got there and saw her whole family, she abandoned her family and sat with us <laughs> and we, did, we sucked yes. up all our energy. Anything that you had <laughs> left that day, we took it. No, it was great. It was like we, uh, I was with the family at like the rooftop, whatever, the hotel bar. And my parents Sky are buying bar. bottles of wine. <laughs> and then you guys showed up and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And so it was a great excuse to take a little break from, from their chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Cause you had a clan there. Like who all was there for you? Yeah, well, my brother lives in um, Tampa, so they had no excuse. They brought, like, the baby. The whole family came up. The family came from Chicago because it's freezing. They were loving it, like, getting out. Um, yeah, so – and then my sister came from Boulder. So we had, like, a pretty solid crew, and we uh, we really took over the uh, the Sky Bar or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a ton of fun. Um, well, for us, you were probably pretty exhausted at that point, but it was a it was such a fun day. Yeah, it was it was an it was a uh, an emotional day, but you know I'm glad it was fun, and I'm glad that you guys had a good time. Well, it was it was it was actually one of the most interesting things for us because I don't like a lot of times when we talk to people, they've had time to process, they've had time to evaluate it with their coach or look back and all that. This was like raw nerves, Lindsay. Like you were still like war wounds, like out there and so it was fun to just be able to like kind of be in the moment and kind of go through it with you and and kind of like be able to get like unfiltered conversation and uh reaction to the day which was a ton of fun some of the stuff we can't even mention here so we'll just leave (laughs) that (laughs) no and like for sure it it is hard it's because you have like all this family and these friends come and I don't even think I had 10 minutes to myself. Like, I think I changed and immediately met them because like, they're there to like celebrate regardless of how it goes. So like, you don't have time to even think about it. And then you guys were like the first people I actually like talked to about. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to process all of this. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was nice to see that someone at your level, like at peak performance also has the same like feelings and goes through the same processes as us like amateur runners do where, You know, like it's if you have a hard day, like it takes a while to process it. And it's like there's like a ton of emotions and it's just like there's like a lot happening, not only physically to you on the day, but emotionally. Yeah, for sure. And it's like this thing you think about for so long and then it's over. And that's another emotional component where you're like, what do I even think about? This is all I've thought about for what, like 16 weeks? Like what? where do I go from here? Yeah. Well, and we already and then like you were we were chatting briefly about like what's next. And it's like, you know, you're already trying to figure out, like, how do I put a new race on the calendar? Uh, yeah. What's next was an awful question for us to be asking that. Night. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the my question is, so like a lot of times I think people want to just OTQ. They just mm-hmm. want to get to the race and that's their goal. Clearly from your reaction, the way that you were feeling, you had a different goal going in there how how much did you feel like before the race started your chance of going to the olympics were like where were where was your mindset going into that race yeah i i mean i I went to australia which was awesome and had such a great training block there and like training at sea level was magical i was like i feel amazing like this is great like you're hitting all these workouts and it was really fun because I think, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this, like when you're working out the same place like every day or you have like, you've done all these marathon buildups in the same spot, you're like comparing all your workouts. You're like, okay, I've run this fast on this loop. This is what I know. So it was awesome to just like get away, be somewhere totally different and not have any of that like in the back of my mind. But then kind of the way training came along, it was just like, it was seamless. Like it was really good. I mean, I was like hitting like my highest mileage, which is like, you know, that's one thing, but like to be able to like still run really quality workouts when you're running like 140 miles a week, I was like, wow, like I feel so good. And even the week of the race, like that was the best I had ever felt uh, going into like a race. Like even like the day before, like you normally feel terrible. You're like, oh my gosh, like how am I going to run tomorrow? And I was like, I feel amazing. This is crazy. And so kind of like the whole built up, we just like, 
approach it as like, I'm going to make this team. Like you have to tell yourself that. And I like, I really did believe it. I was like, oh, I'm not here just to, you know, show up and like have fun. I'm here to like actually make the team. And um, I know that I can like, you know, race in a championship setting. So I was actually really excited about that. Like I knew that you needed to probably be in like, 222 shape to make the team. But I was like, I don't know if that's what you're going to actually have to run, which is what you did have to run, you know, to make, to make the team. So I felt like I was in that fitness and like all the workouts kind of showed that. And of course you like see these workouts and you're like, Oh, but does that actually translate on race day? But I really thought that it would. So, um, I went in like super confident. So, um, yeah, it was, it was tough when that, you know, it didn't happen. Okay. I have a million questions from all of that, but first one, you mentioned Australia, sea level. Sure, there's a lot of sea level places, though. Why Australia? <laughs> so I, um, well, I live in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and the weather, it's just unpredictable in the winter. And I was like, you know what? We are going to take that stressor completely out of the equation. But of course, like I could have went to Phoenix. I could have just went to Orlando. Like I didn't need to go across the country or across the world. Uh, but my coach actually lives in Australia. We were chatting and she's like, it's actually so normal. Like, and I realized this, like athletes from other countries, um, they go abroad to like training camps all the time. But in the U.S., we're very lucky. Like we have a lot of places here where people don't always do that. But I was just like excited about going somewhere new. And I was like, if you're going to leave for 14 weeks, like you don't have to go to, you know, Phoenix, you can go somewhere else. So I actually ran the BAA half and left straight from Boston um, early November and went straight to Australia. I actually learned I took the longest flight that you can actually take. I think it was oh. Houston <laughs> to Sydney. It was like 18 hours and there was probably 10 of us on this flight. I don't know how it took off. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I was like, it's going to be summer there. It's going to be hot. Um, I wanted also a climate that was pretty similar to Boulder where um, I think you can overdo humidity a little bit. Like if you're training – super hard in heat and humidity for like 12, 14 weeks. I was like, I don't really want to run myself into the ground, but I do want to like constantly like be in a warm spot. So where I was in South Australia, Adelaide, it was like, I think the day I left, it was 104 degrees. Uh, So it was very, it was very hot. Um, It was like decently humid, but I just kind of did similar to what I did before world champs where, where it was like the summer in Boulder, you know, nineties. And then I would just do the sauna for, you know, four weeks before the race. All right, I'm going to back you up a little bit before we go uh, back to Australia. You can ask a follow-up question to Australia. But the first thing I want to get to is this is a thing that I always find fascinating when we talk to middle distance and track athletes versus marathoners. It really is you can have a day or you can not have a day and any, yeah. any distance. They're not as painful when it's a middle distance or a short distance race because you can reload in a week or two. Or exactly. sometimes, sometimes less. What like that? This is something I think that every amateur marathoner can relate to you as as a pro. What is what happens to your mind when you realize that today is not the day, and you've been working so hard for months leading up to an event like this? Like what what is the process of the downslope, and then how do you get out of it and go? Okay, I can I can give this another shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think like mid race, especially in like a a race like this, but I think anyone can relate to this, whether you're like at the Olympic trials or you're racing, you're seeing your goal time, like slip away or for like, in my case, I'm seeing top three slip away. And it is, it's it's really tough because you're running and you're noticing that like everyone around you is dropping out and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm not making this team. Like this is miserable. But then you like, you totally have to reframe your thinking. And I think I did go through that little like pity party for a little bit where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is getting away from me. Like this is such an awful experience. But I'm like, I did not just train in Australia for like 16 weeks and run all these workouts and mileage, like for no reason. I was like, whether it's like my day or not, like I have to finish this. And I think, um, you know, I mean, everyone has their reasons for stopping too, but I've actually never dropped out of a race. And of course there's, you know, if you're injured or something, you can, but I was like, I'm not hurt. Like I'm, I might not feel good, but I'm going to like finish this for like, at least my support team for myself. So I'm glad I did that. And then of course you finish and you're immediately like, okay, what's next? Like, what can I put myself into? And I'm like, <laughs> talking to my agent that afternoon. I'm like, okay, can we run this race? Can we do this? He's like, maybe we just like wait like a little bit, like maybe like give it like two weeks. Like you're pretty like emotional right now. So I think, um, I think you always also have to think that like your best days are ahead. Like if you, if I would have been like, oh, okay, like, 
you know, I don't think I'll ever run faster, or place higher. Like I don't really have a reason to like race anymore. But I think when you when you firmly believe that your best days are ahead, then you always are kind of looking to the next thing. So I think I had that great training block and I was like, I know that I have a better race in me. And I, I'm like, obviously it didn't happen today, but it's going to happen one day. So I think that's what motivates me to like, uh, kind of sign up for the next race. Yeah. We, we talked a little bit about this, um, after the race at the sky bar, but, um, like leading into this, you were super confident and you were like, I mean, you were going for top three. So at what point in the race, like I'm, I'm assuming even through halfway, maybe you were like, this is, this could still be my day. At what point did it change where you were like, maybe I am not going to make it? Yeah. So I want to say like halfway, I remember, um, I don't remember the exact split, but I remember I was like running, I was like in no world ever wanted to lead until I feel like when you kind of take the lead, my kind of the way I think about it is like, you're taking the lead to stay in the lead. And like, I didn't want to do that like early at all. But I remember it was like halfway and I turned and I think it was like Sarah Hall was right next to me. And I remember I felt so good. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to do this. Like, I feel great. Like I know I'm in the lead. Like that's not really the point. Like we're all kind of in this like bubble, but I felt really good. Um, And then I started to have like pretty shortly after that, you went out to like, I don't know if it was like the milk district or what it was. I just call yeah. it like a park where there was like nobody and it was pretty tough. We got out there and all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, like my stomach is not okay. And like, you try and tell yourself you're going to be fine. You're like, oh, it's fine. Like it's, it's going to go away in a second. But then I was like, oh wait, this, this like isn't actually going away. And so then we go around the park and like, we're going into that last lap, which I think you're at, um, it was like 18 miles around that point. And I think that's when Fiona threw in the surge. And all of a sudden I like couldn't respond. I felt terrible. I felt like I was like going backwards and I was like, wait, everything went from like, okay to like so bad in like 30 seconds. And then, um, and then I kind of went into like survival mode a little bit. Um, and you know, it, it was like a struggle after that, but I would say even through like, you know, 25k I was like okay I can still do this like my stomach's not feeling great but like I've had a lot of races where my stomach hasn't felt great but then it turned to like oh I'm I'm not sure this is gonna happen and at any point were you because I feel like the a6 crew like all of you ladies came in what was it like five six seven eight nine or something like that were you yeah. guys at all working together at any point or was everyone kind of in their own like solo races out there yeah, I think everyone was kind of like doing their thing. I mean, of course, I was like, if we can have an A6 sweep, that would be amazing. And I did <laughs> see like Mac going, like that. <laughs> going into like, the back lap, I did see Betsy all of a sudden was like laying in the grass. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening up there? And then in my mind, I'm like, if I don't make this team, Sarah Hall better make this team. And like, you're like hoping for your teammates. And at that point, I thought I was like, minutes behind everybody like you're going through your own in your own little world and it wasn't until I turned the corner for that final like I don't know how long the stretch was I saw just like a sea of a6 people and I was like wait we're all actually like really close and I like didn't realize that you know there was probably like 20 second span for like you know the four of us so that was it was cool for like the brand and for all of us to like be able to have that moment together but I I really when I when I knew I was probably not going to make it I was like those women better get it like you know you just hope for that Yeah I I'm curious though when you're coming through and and you, when we're watching as a spectator we're watching stars rising and stars kind of plateauing and maybe some people that have this is their how many times have they gone out for the Olympic trials and is this their last Olympic trials? And you want to you know, like, it's, there's so much drama around this one event as a pro athlete. Do you see all that like going on? Is that, is this event as important as an athlete as it is to us as a spectator to be watching like, Oh, this is somebody's final shot at it. Or this is someone's first shot at it. And all, all the weight that's involved with that as an athlete running in it is a race carry all that stress and, and sort of like, um, like a pivot in people's careers. Yeah. And it's, it's an interesting question because obviously like the Olympics is like the pinnacle. It's like everybody wants that, but like when you're in this race, like 
it also just feels like any other race. Like you think that it feels different. And like to me, like I never let the stress of that really get to me because like I, I hope that this isn't my last trials by any means. And the only reason, you know, I was like upset for Sarah was just because like she had fought for so long and like, you know, and she very much can make this team. And so um, it's, it is interesting because it is this like huge event. There's a lot of stress, but it's also really weird. Like when it's over, um, it's over and like everybody kind of moves on and you find these other races and you can still do so many cool things in this sport if you don't, you know, make the Olympics. So it is this high pressure event, but like when we were actually racing, it felt just like it could have been Boston. It could have been just okay. like the U S champs. Like it didn't really change the way I like thought about the race. Cause as soon as you start stressing about this, like, Oh my gosh, this could be my last trials. It's like, Oh my gosh, no one wants to have to think about that, you know, in the middle of the yeah. race. Well, I mean, that that's the thing that was curious as an outsider looking at it and it was, you know, it's not a huge feel. So when you say it's like a Boston or something like that, and I know that when you guys are running that it is, you guys are so far out in front that it is similar to that. But from a spectator standpoint, when we're watching it and we see somebody who's 20 people back or, you know, pretty far back, like there's no shot in making it. And it was a hot day. You're out in exposed in the sun. Unless you just want to finish the trials. I'm like, what are there some athletes that should are, you know, do they have this fortitude to just be like, I want to finish or should they drop out and be like, yeah, there's other events. I'm not going to make the team. Or is it, is it that important to finish the trials that you think you hold on? Yeah. And it, it's interesting. I mean, cause look at, we saw Betsy, you know, she drops out and then she goes to Tokyo. What? I think that was like a two week turnaround and she runs that crazy. 219. And I was like, should have, I just went to Tokyo. Like, <laughs> I mean, I did it last year. We could have done it again. Um, but yeah, and I think everyone has their reasons. And if like, I mean, obviously I thought Betsy was in phenomenal shape. So I, I really thought she was also going to make the team. So again, like everybody has their different reasons, but yeah, it, it is. I mean, it is, it's very challenging to finish when you know you're not going to be in the top three, but then you also just have to think of it as any other race. Like if I'm not coming to the top three at Boston, like I'm still going to like fight to the finish line. So that was kind of the, and when it's like a hot day and it's just like a little bit tougher, you're just like, man, I just, I have to get through this. This, so in the Olympic trials, uh, there's no race money. It's all for the chance. No, to there's the race Olympic. money. Is there? Yeah. Right. Okay. Isn't there top actually, 10? There actually was. And like, so I didn't look at the money like before, because for some reason, some people can get like really motivated by that. But like, I don't know when I'm like suffer, I like money that doesn't really motivate me. So I like didn't look at it before. And it's like always like a nice thing afterwards when you're like, oh, there was some money. But there actually was like a decent, a decent amount, which was um, which was nice. Like when you finish, you're like, OK, well, at least I financially made some money out of that. But you're more like Clayton Young where you don't care about the money and you're going to let someone run <laughs> and out. You, front of you. Maybe let's, you know, let's. <laughs> Yeah, I did finally watch the the men's like finish. And yeah, that was, you know, it was crazy. But Clayton, he's a good guy. We're thrilled for him. And, you know, he he has bigger things that he cares about. So, yeah, yeah. we also talked about and Thomas, I think, was kind of like hitting on this. But and we talked about how like it's one day and you were like, if I had raced this tomorrow, maybe I would have been on the podium. Maybe I would have been 20th. Like it's just one day and it's. Like everything has to align on that one day. And I know other countries do it a different, they all, everyone has their own way of doing it, but how do you feel about it being set up this way versus maybe like a, a board who selects athletes? Yeah. And it's funny. It's like, as soon as I finish, like I'm having this conversation with my sister and I was like, the marathon is all luck. Like I hate this race. Like it's all luck. It's 90% luck. And she's like, it's not 90% luck. I was like, no, it is. I was like, because you can have like nothing like stomach or anything happen your whole buildup and just one day it does. Um, but I do think that like the trials, it is, um, I like like our system. I like that we have a trials race, but I also kind of like how um, Japan does it, where they have like the top, they have a trials and technically like the top three make the team, but that final spot, they get to like, um, they set this time standard and then everybody has the opportunity to kind of like chase this third spot. And I think that's fun. Like, I think it's fun for like fans of the sport who are like, oh my gosh, is someone going to like knock this person out or beat this time? And it's, it's like fun for also the athletes because you're like, oh, there's still like a glimmer of hope. Like I can get in another race. Like I can give it another shot. Like maybe on a day, maybe it didn't come together today, but if I have one more opportunity, maybe it comes together that day. So I do love the trials. Like I love the, 
I mean, the drama of it, I'm sure as a spectator is a lot more fun than as an athlete, <laughs> but because it is, it's, it's very dramatic. Um, so I do like it, but then I also kind of wish like that third spot was a little bit more like up for grabs. Yeah. Have you ever seen people like throw their tickets after they're done gambling? Cause they're like, ah, I just lost everything. <laughs> yes, I exactly. felt that's how the trials kind of felt for me at the end. I was like, I was like, uh, everybody I want to win. Is, yeah. Is and it's I, I, we picked Clayton, but that was about it. So exciting for the people that make it, but yeah, like, wouldn't it be fun if you were just like, okay, but now there's like another element of drama where people mm-hmm. can like face this. Yeah. I, it, I, I liked uh, there was one other, there was a guy running for a marathon spot cause they didn't, they had a third spot in their country that didn't have a qualification time. Mm-hmm. And that was exciting. He was running a regular marathon and you're like, you're got, got really invested and in just watching him to try to see if he could break it. But did, I, I mean, we got up and watched the Tokyo marathon. What time was that in the morning? Like, no, that was at night. Oh, was it, it was night at we night. watched it? Yeah. 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 I watched it on a, like a pirated YouTube, like of someone nice. filming the screen. And uh, yeah, it was actually pretty funny because I couldn't figure out the whole like <laughs> VPN thing. I don't know. It was all too confusing for me. I don't know how we, we got it through like a regular We've, station. We purchased, it was either like flow track or something. And so we got to watch it on TV, but there's been times where that's no better than like the pirated version. So like Berlin yeah. marathon <laughs> on flow track, they didn't have any commentators. Yeah. It was so, so weird. It was oh, the no. worst. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I watched was pretty comical. Um, and then I then I did actually get a hold of just a Japanese broadcast where it was all in Japanese, but at least yeah. I got to like, see the race. And um, I did get to see like Betsy finish and everything, which was pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, okay, let's go back to Australia real quick because I have a few more questions. Okay, we were just sent Tim Tams. Did you eat those while you were over there? No, but well, I have celiac, so I couldn't eat the Tim Tams, oh. but that is like such a popular thing. And there's like so many interesting like little like Australian like, I don't know, candies and snacks. And, like it is very much like America there. Like it was very easy to travel to Australia. Like there's no language barrier. Like everything's pretty much the same. Um, but yeah, like the people are so nice. And I don't know if you guys have been to Australia yet or if you're mm-hmm. going to go to Sydney, but um, you would love it. It is. It's I fantastic. think I would. Do they, do, are they like, we love your accent when you're over there? <laughs> they did. They like would ask all the time and like, oh, they would get me like confused with somewhere else. They're like, where are you from? And uh, I was like, oh, from like the US. And I don't know what I got. I got like a couple, maybe like, it could have even been the UK at one point. And I was like, UK, no. Uh, but yeah, like everyone is so friendly. Like they go out of their way to like help you. Um, again, like I, I want you guys to like go to Sydney for Sydney Marathon because I feel like you would, you would thrive yeah. over there. I like it. Okay. So other than your coach, did you know anyone over there? So I knew, um, Izzy Bat Doyle is another A6 athlete and that's she a made did- up name. That is a made up name. <laughs> Izzy Bat Doyle. No, she's fantastic. Izzy. I mean, she just ran what, like 223 in Valencia and then she turned oh, it wow. around and ran like a 1450 something 5k. Um, so I knew her over there and then I knew another, um, woman, Jess Trengrove, who used to run for ASICs. Uh, she had just had her second child, but she was like, oh, I'll show you around, like, you know, help you as much as I can. And then my coach also um, knew some people that she was like, oh, this would be like a good person to like link up with training. So I really never had to do anything by myself. Like always had people to meet. Like it was, um, it was really fun. Yeah. I was going to say, did you miss family? And then like, cause I don't know how many hours the difference Christmas. is, but was it hard to communicate like back home it was funny yeah it's it's like one of the only places in the world it was um 17 hours and 30 minutes which was like very bizarre uh to have like an additional 30 minutes an hour yeah it's like wait a second yeah it was like wait i have no idea what time it is uh but it was actually helped like when i would get up in the morning um it was like obviously like the day behind but like later in the evening so it it did help i think the 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 couple of times it was hard was like when it was like Christmas or New Year's and like, you know, it's already Tuesday for me and I'm like going to do this really hard workout and the family's like waking up and doing presents and they're all excited. Or no, it's like later in the day, they're having drinks, they're having a great time and it's like early <laughs> for me and I'm like, Christmas is over. I have this hard workout. Like I am not on the same page as you guys right now. So there was like a couple of times where you just like, we get a little bit irritated, but for the most part, it was great. Like, you know, talking with everyone at home. Okay. And then best, like, I know Tim Tams were off the table, but what was the amazing food or anything good you had over there? 
Yeah. So their Asian food is fantastic. So I feel like that's like all I ate, but then it's also Adelaide was like wine country. So they just like, um, early on, like in the block, I like went up to like some of the wineries and like the Hills and got to do that. And then like, I mean, they were very into like Pinot Noir and, and things like that. So I, I drank a decent amount of wine when I was there too. So honestly, no complaints. I like a Pinot Noir. Yeah. yeah it was good. You're, um, you're selling Australia for sure. Like I'm ready to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sydney Marathon, ASICs, get them there. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> okay, add that to the list. I know what you all wear. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Or because I have a. What, you let me do ahead. one more Australia you question. Uh, well, Are not you going to really. ask about koala bears or those flying squirrels? No, but okay. now I am. What was that thing called? The little sugar sugar glider? Did you see sugar gliders over there? <laughs> no. But I'm okay, so we're on this. Ins- I want to know on what a weird- sugar glider is. <gasps> okay, Google go- it. Yeah, we're on this weird Instagram one. algorithm where people find like little tiny baby animals that are like <laughs> the size of a thimble and then they nurse them with like cat's milk or something. I don't know. And then they grow <laughs> up and they're all attached to the person. So sugar gliders can like fly. They're like flying squirrel things. And this guy raises one from like the peanut size to like real. And now it's his best friend. It flies to him from trees and they cuddle and stuff like that. <laughs> and then we started, there's another one that was some Australian thing. And yeah, there, there's a lot of little animals getting raised by humans. And wait, are they like, are they Australian like natives, the sugar gliders? Mm. I don't, we're not exactly, we didn't, we didn't not, go into we didn't Wikipedia do, yeah. or anything. <laughs> it just looked like Australia. Like well, I, thought, I think I saw eucalyptus leaves and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> No, I actually never saw. Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, did you see, like, crazy snakes? And I was like, I didn't see any snakes, which was fantastic. Um, yeah. I did see some, like, really big spiders. I will say that. That was pretty scary. Um, I don't like that. No, I didn't love that either. Um, it was, like, a huntsman spider maybe. It was, like, oh, that sounds not, horrible. like, biggest spider I've ever seen. Um, and then it's called the one- huntsman. <laughs> Yeah, the huntsman. I was like, what is this? I had to like Google it. I was like, is this poisonous? Because it was in the house and it wasn't poisonous, but I did like suck it up with like a Dyson vacuum cleaner, which I'm sorry to all the animal lovers, but I was like, I just can't like sleep knowing this is in the house. No, what I I, I'm it, like, I fine. wouldn't wreck my Dyson. <laughs> No, no I so never I, use the Dyson again. No, I sucked it up and then I was so afraid that it was going to crawl out that I left the vacuum outside for the night. I was like, is that it has time to like, escape like, if it needs to? <laughs> Solid move. Uh, yeah, I don't like a spider. No. Um, okay, you do 130, 140 mile weeks. Explain this to me. Is this, are you, have you always been high mileage or was this like new for this cycle? What, what was that all about? Yeah, I feel like earlier on in my career, like I started marathoning relatively young. So I think like probably my first 10 marathons, you know, I'm running like 80, maybe like 80, maybe 90 miles, like nothing crazy. And then like, as you get older, you can just handle like a little bit more volume. And obviously now like with the shoes and things like that, like recovery is just, it's a game changer. Like you can like turn it around and do harder efforts and run a little bit more volume. But I think since working with, um, my coach that I'm working with now, uh, Benita Willis, we've just gradually kind of increased a little bit where like maybe I was doing 120 and then before Worlds, I was doing 130. And then this time it was 140 and it was never like, oh, you know, we have to just like keep bringing up the volume. It just like was naturally happening when like workouts were getting a little bit longer or we're like experimenting basically like, you know, doing doubles after like long runs or doing doubles after like pretty long workouts on Friday where you're getting like a 30 mile day and you're like, oh, wow, that was actually just like a really big volume week. But um, I think as long as you're able to like hit your workouts still and have like really quality workouts, like, you know, you're not overdoing it with the with the volume, because I think like if you're just going and running 140 miles, but you're like, I can't hit any paces, then you're like, well, this isn't really like worth doing this. But um, but yeah, I think being at sea level too, I was like, oh, this is like between the shoes and like oxygen. I was like, I feel great. We could keep going. How much of a gear nerd are you? You know, not like obviously like I love all the ASICs products, but I look back and what I was racing, like my very original marathons. And, and I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I think like my first marathons, like I was wearing like the Nike streak, like back in like probably like 2015. And I was like, if you tried to wear that in a that. marathon now, I think you would break <laughs> your foot. Like, I don't even think you could do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wore those for a marathon, the white ones with the, with the bolt, uh, yes. highlights on them. Yeah. yeah right I before think, the, yeah. Yeah. The first time I, was, I think I 
broke 230. I was wearing like um, a pair of like Mizuno, like oh, if you could have seen what they were, I don't even know what they were called at like the time, but they were, they were like basically a moccasin. Yeah. Do you remember your like the next day after that? Like you couldn't I walk? Remember I, I remember I thought I broke my foot. I remember I was like, oh my God, like I can't walk. Like I can't put pressure on my foot. Like And recovery, it took like a month. Like you, I, I used to take two weeks off because I truly couldn't even walk for like two weeks. Yeah. It is crazy. The recovery benefits. Was this the shoes. shoe? Oh, geez. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's the shoe. <laughs> yeah. M- Mizuno Hitagami. I ran a marathon Hitagami. in this one too. We had yes. similar... Similar choice. I think what it was back then was we sacrificed the cushioning for lightweight. Exactly. And so you wanted something light on your foot. And I mean, you can look at these and I'm holding them up to the camera right now, but that's like maybe 10 millimeters of foam in the front and <laughs> the back maybe 15. Half, even? I feel like you could probably bend that shoe like in half. <laughs> yes. I mean, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you can't, it, it still, it still had a plate in it, but yeah, this the plastic one. This was like peak Mizuno for me back in the day. Like yeah. I, I, I just uh, that these were fun, but they yeah, did that was my marathon feet. shoe for probably like the first three years. And then uh, yeah, your feet. I I would wear that the Saucony um, a uh, Type A six, and the um, there was a whole bunch of them that were like that that were just. And you did after you ran the marathon. It felt like your knees and your your legs were just beat up Mm -hmm. and that is what is so awesome like i know that like definitely for you you're getting the full benefit of a super shoe you and megan cranking them out you're working the plate it's you're getting all the advantages i'm not quite as fast as you guys but i still feel like the advantage i get from the setup with the plate and the foam i don't know like i do long runs and my legs feel great yeah, that's the other thing. It's like even the training shoes now. Like I train in like Nova Blast, Super Blast. I'm like just the recovery of wearing those shoes on a daily basis. I'm like this is night and day. Well, that's how you can get up to like 130, what is it, 140, 140 yeah. miles a week. <laughs> like you, I don't think you could do that if you were wearing uh, those old flats. No, absolutely not. Like I just – there's no way. Um, it's it really is a game changer, and and I think of course, like we're all like, oh my gosh, you can run so fast to them, which you can. But I'm like, it's the recovery. Like it's I think mm-hmm. that's the biggest game changer. Is like you can just train so much harder. Okay, so do you love the marathon grind? Like when you see that 140 mile week coming up, does that excite you? And you're like, I love doing this, or do you, or do you get excited for like the down weeks when it's like I don't know, maybe a 70 or 80 mile week. No, I mean, I love it. I love the grind of it. Like, and I think I just love the challenge. And a lot of times we don't do uh, the same workouts, which I think is good because I'm like, I hate, I mean, there are some that like you, you repeat, but I really don't like ever like looking back and being like, this is what I hit for this race or this, Mm -hmm. uh, this workout, because the context is so different. Maybe you're not running as much. Maybe you're doing like you're at altitude or whatnot, but no, I love like the grind of it. And there's something about like, just like getting to the midpoint of that workout and being like, okay, now I've got to go and like execute. And it's kind of, it, it is, it's kind of like a race, but you kind of get, um, you get a little bit like nervous and excited when you see those like 30 K like long run type workouts. And you're like, man, this is going to hurt like the whole time, but I'm actually really excited <laughs> for it. See, as a, as a person doing half the mileage <laughs> in my peak marathon. So like I just uh, finished a 65 mile week, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. <laughs> um, the, um, but that's a lot. The, but when you're get what I like about those big weeks is like you said, there's a challenge, but like when I was finishing my long run, I was like, when I finish this, I'll have gone over 60 miles for the week. And it kind of helps you get through that workout. So are you, when you're getting those max miles, you're like, I am putting together a solid week. And if I finish this run healthy, this is going to be, I don't know, the most or in this training cycle, like is, uh, what's going on in your head? Yeah, I think like you get a little bit of, like excited. I mean, anytime like you finish the week, and I think there was only one time I like, and obviously Benita doesn't even like calculate the mileage. Like she won't tell me like this is what it's going to be. It just like ends up being. But like I don't know if your Garmin ever tells you like this is the volume and it like, shows like the number up at uh-huh. the top. I think I took a picture one time because it was like one forty two or something. I was like, this is just absurd. Like I never thought I would see this, but. um but it's more like you finish the week and you're like, okay, that was really hard, but like that didn't destroy me. And I think that's when I get excited where you're like, oh, I'm like absorbing the training really well. Like this is actually exciting. 
Emma hasn't hooked you up with a chorus yet. <laughs> I, know. I, like, I am using like I've had the same watch for like I don't even know what this is probably for like five years um I need to get more into the gear I do yeah <laughs> the gears the fun part if you're not winning medals <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in between your running to aid recovery outside of obviously the shoes that are helping yeah, it was just, I mean, it's a lot of just like lounging. I mean, it was hot. So we were running early and then obviously would have like a lot of time between runs. So it was just like taking a nap, like using the Norma tag. Like I was getting treatment probably like at least once, if not twice a week, just like massage and oh, things like great. that. And the exchange rate in Australia was fantastic. So you're like, everything's free, even though it was not free. But, um, <laughs> King of the world. Yeah, what about like, amazing. <laughs> What about Epsom salt bath? That's my my go to. Yeah, I think because it was so hot, I like wasn't really into like a hot bath. But like if I'm in Boulder in the winter and I'm running that much, like yeah, that's like a staple because you're just like freezing and it's just like a little bit like cranky and that kind of makes you feel a little bit better. Uh, but I wasn't really doing like I don't really ice bath or anything anymore. Maybe I should get back into that. But I don't, there's yeah, I hear a lot of mixed stuff about the ice bath. What about the saunas? Those seem like they're the big rage now. I want a sauna. Yes. So I'm actually going to get a sauna for my garage because now I'm like obsessed with the sauna. But the research. Wait, wait. Which one are you going with before you get okay. the research? This is what we need to talk about. So I've been trying to do like <laughs> dive into saunas and I was like, okay, like infrared versus like the, the wet sauna. Like, I don't know. The research really isn't there to say if one is better than the other. I think the whole thing is you need to get it up to like a certain, I don't know, what is it? Like 170? I don't know the exact temperature. Wow. Yeah. But like, I mean- financial wise, like the infrared ones are much cheaper. So I'm like, huh. if it is really like a very similar benefit, do you just go with the infrared sauna? I don't know. Which one are you guys thinking? I like to, I want, I we want do not, one. We do not have yeah. space for one. <laughs> we do. We have space in the garage. I want one that you can pour water over the rocks. That's my thing. That's what I wanted. Yes. And then I started looking into this and I was like, why are these $10,000 and the infrared <laughs> ones are like only $1,000? And I was like, nope. you can buy an infrared sauna at Costco. <laughs> Lindsay, we need to work with you a little bit here. <laughs> I, I think that you would be a great advocate for a sauna. And, you know, you, maybe if we just keep talking about it, you're going to get one. Yeah, it'll just show up in your <laughs> yeah. garage. I would love that. Like I've actually like carved up space in the garage and like figured out where it would go. And I was like, and like when it's cold and you finish running, I'm like, how amazing that you just power that thing up and you finish and you just get right in there. Like that'd be so nice. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I would love it. And you know what? I have like a little cold plunge barrel right outside the door of that. So you could go hot, cold, hot, cold. Amazing. And strictly right? from like a hygiene standpoint, like being in the sauna with a bunch of people at the gym, like it is just nasty. So I'm like, I think just yeah. like health wise, I think I just need one in the garage. I remember I was, it was during COVID and they were telling us you had to wear the mask in the sauna, which I did, but it, you're, it's hard to breathe in 170 with a mask on. But there was this one dude who was, he was one of those guys, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> The guys that sauna guys and sauna like nobody guys. wants to see this guy naked. He would come in full naked, no mask, and just be like, oh, no. want to talk to you. Like, no, what, no. Well, what's your story? I'm like, no, my, I have no story. <laughs> we I have, have nothing quiet. to discuss. I put the earbuds yeah. in and even when like my, your phone overheats and like obviously you're not listening to anything, but everyone thinks you are. So it's great. I, no one bothers you. Sometimes it's when it's busy, and I should, probably shouldn't give this tip away, when I don't feel like talking to people, I just put my phone up to my ear like I'm talking and just walk with my head down. And <laughs> you, can, you can go anywhere. <laughs> it's very similar. Earbuds, phone, it's like, don't bother me. Yeah. You know who did that, <laughs> who did that to me? Uh, Steph Curry. <laughs> I got in an elevator with him in, at the Nike headquarters. I was, well, he was, <laughs> it wasn't at the Nike headquarters. <clears throat> they were in town to play basketball against the Blazers and the hotel that Nike put me up. He got into the uh, elevator and I look at him and he just nods his head like, yep, it's me and put in his headphone and just put his eyes down. I was like, that's, and you're just like, wow, that was a power move. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I was like, Solid. I was like, but, okay. <laughs> um, okay. We, we kind of talked about shoes, but you didn't actually tell us what you raced in at the trials. I mean, I know, but tell everyone Yay. what it is. I came prepared. I, actually, Asics. I bought. I just, I got a pair off the website, and then they sent me a pair. But I raced in the um, Metaspeed um, Paris Edge. 
So typically I'll wear like the Sky uh, Plus and things like that. But actually in this shoe, I kind of feel like they flip-flopped a little bit, which is a little confusing for people. But I would say um, for a lot of people that were wearing like Metaspeed Sky Plus, the edge is actually um, pretty similar to that. Well, let me ask you a couple questions about it then. So the Sky was the more forgiving of the two before, the Plus mm -hmm. and the Edge. The Sky seemed more like your marathon shoe. They felt like a little more underfoot. Mm -hmm. And the foam was a little more forgiving, even though I feel like that shoe is one of the firmer uh, race day shoes out there. Mm -hmm. What's the difference now between if you got the Sky before, the Sky Plus, and the Sky Paris now, what do you feel like the difference is? Yeah, I felt like, so I actually, I'll use the Sky Paris more for like speed work. There's something about it where like, it's pretty like aggressive, maybe like, I don't know, rocker or I'm not sure what it is, but like, I it can't really like get my, um, for like a tempo or like a marathon effort, like it just doesn't feel as natural for me. So like when I was doing track workouts, like the Sky Paris was fun. I was like, oh, this is like snappy, but I think this one like, um, I think the rockers are like a little bit more gentle and it's not as chunky up here. I think if like, if you look at the sky, um, it's a, it's really fat, like, uh, on these sides and this one's just a little, and the medial side, it, it bulges out. Yeah. The, and you can actually see it. Like it's like a big yeah. like, bump right there. And this one just felt a lot more natural. And it was funny when they first sent me the shoes, I like reached out to my boss, I reached out to Ben and I was like, are other people actually that used to wear the you know, the sky going towards the edge. And he's like, oh, actually, basically like everybody. And then I think when I look at, at the trials, I think all of us minus maybe Clayton ended up wearing the edge. So obviously it's it seems like, I mean, not for everybody, but the um, it seems like a more natural like marathon show. Yeah, I feel like ASICs could have come out with like tested and just come out with the one shoe and it would have probably saved a lot of people confusion. However, though, I've been running in both and I do find I like both of them for different reasons. Exactly. I'm actually, like I understand why Megan likes the edge Paris because you get some soft cushioning before you get that plate. So mm -hmm. you kind of get a more, I think it's a more comfortable yeah, ride. It's definitely more comfortable, but she loves the alpha fly. And I feel like the sky with the plate closer to your feet and then more foam underneath the plate, you kind of get that more, like reaction underneath of the of the plate you get kind of more a little pop off the toe and mm -hmm. i think that may be why when you talk about the speed uh doing speed workouts i found that when i was doing repeats in the sky paris that it felt a little more like like immediate pop off the toe mm -hmm. versus versus the edge but i do think if i'm going long distance i want a little more of that forgiving feeling from the edge yeah, Does and have you guys raced, raced in it yet? I did a half marathon in the edge. Okay, and what did you think? I loved it. I thought it was great. And it, the night before, though, I was walking around my living room with one sky on, one edge on. <laughs> and I was, like, really torn because, like, I had a good uh, 800 repeats in the uh, sky Paris. See? Like, great, for, great for speed. Yeah, and, and yeah. I, I think I think you nailed it. I think it's like the sky feels a little bit more aggressive now, and the edge just feels a little bit more like a little bit more cushioned for like the marathon distance or or any longer distance race. Yeah, the thing that's spectacular about both though is the weight, and they weigh almost identical weight. And I don't know what your size, what size shoe do you wear? Um, I'm an eight, so I think it's like a men's six and a half. So I think yeah, right around there. Okay, so. That's the same size I'm wearing, which is like 5.2 ounces or something. You're wearing an eight? Yeah. In this? Oh, wow. Yeah, 5.2 ounces. That's ridiculous. And it my men, my men's 10 and a half weighs under eight ounces or under seven ounces. It's six something. It's crazy. Which that's lighter than a competitor's, a premier competitor's uh, race day shoe. Um, <laughs> so are you contemplating, are you going to race full marathon in this or are you like- I uh, would. No, I, I definitely would. And I'm actually, it's funny. I'm more open, I think, to different race day shoes than Meg is. Well, we're going to run Cherry Blossom. So I'm going to wear the edge for that. Yeah, but we're not racing. No, but. Are you really going to throw down? Because it's the week before Boston, right? Yeah. yeah. Normally you get like a couple weeks in between the two, but it's a week before. So you can't really get too crazy. Yeah. Caster yeah. is like jog it. 
Are you, you're not running it, are you? No, I'm not, but it's an ASICS race and I would love to yeah. do it. And I've done it twice. Like it's such a fun race, but I did notice that as well. It's, um, it's normally two weeks before Boston, but this week it's, um, this time it's, it's very close. Everything's yeah. messed up. And it's like Easter's this weekend. <laughs> no, it's in That's a couple. Bizarre. Or, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it is this weekend. Is it it is. That's one? why the boys are all oh, off yeah. for That's right. like spring I break and stuff. Who knows what time is anymore? Mm-mm. So you're not coming to Cherry Blossom what race are you coming to? <laughs> yeah, so it's a little up in the air. Um, you know, I was like having a lot of fun getting back into training, like had a couple things, um, you know, lined up. And then, of course, like you make plans and your body says no. Um, I have been dealing with like a little bit of an injury, kind of like stepped weird on some ice, which is why we go south in the winter um, and just had a little bit of a – a flare up. So it's for the first mm. time that I actually kind of had to be like, Oh, maybe I need to like wait to put another race on the calendar. But, uh, but we'll see like hoping that things that's weird. Up. I I had heard that you're running the Brooklyn half in uh, May. I would love to run the Brooklyn and, half in and May. The, <laughs> and then they said you were going to have a hot dog with us at Coney Island when you <laughs> finished. I've always actually wanted to go to Coney Island, which is a very funny thing because it's not that exciting. But I was like, but for me, it would be exciting. <laughs> well, you could run as fast as you could to get there. <laughs> yeah, I've actually wanted to do that race. I think hist- I think it was maybe the past two years. I think it had gotten like really hot, hadn't it? Like, like got a little bit crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of fun, though, like where you're just like, all right, I'm just going to go compete, see what happens. Well, last year was weird because it, it- – it was warmer, but it wasn't the warmth that got you. It was super humid. And it rained. So, yes. yeah. But I will, I, uh, just real quick to go back to the sky and the thing, because I remember yeah. some. So I was walking around my living room with uh, one of them each on, and I I uh, messaged a friend, Paul, who you may know from ASICS, and um, I said, which one? And he said, what's the terrain? Like I said, there's going to be like 800 feet of elevation. He was like, go with, go at the edge plus. Mm-hmm. For sure. Paris. Edge Paris, yeah, Edge Paris. Yeah, and it is a little confusing, I will say. I kind of at first was like, oh, no, maybe they should come out with one because people will get confused. But then you wear both of them, and you're like, oh, but they're so good for different things. So you need mm-hmm. both. And they what, they should sell a, a subscription. <laughs> <laughs> Just get them both. But, yeah, and I do, I, like, it's a fun shoe, light and all that. But, yeah, we talked about that. I'll, I'll let that roll. Okay, this is a very important question, Lindsay. Do you remember – the last time you came on the drop. Okay. I'm going to say it was during COVID. Um, was it like after London COVID where we did the loops in the park or maybe before then? I can't remember exactly. It was October 9th, 2020. Yes, that was. It was right after London. <laughs> so crazy. We've like done, I, this will be one, this will probably be in the uh, 250s uh, as far as yeah, um, episodes. episodes. And do you guess which episode you were on of what the number? Drop? Oh man, it had to have been early. I mean, because four years, I'm saying maybe like number like eight, five, so five. Yeah. yeah, it was you and Ilya Kipchoge. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember like it was a really long time ago and it seemed like COVID because like I was trying to remember the house I was living in at the time and I was like, no, it had to have been like 2020. Yeah, if you had asked me that, I would have said, oh, we probably talked to Lindsay like two years ago, but no, it's been four. So yeah, I guess thank you for coming on this show at number five. We we, we were pretty much just talking to ourselves. (laughs) (laughs) And me. Yeah, you've you've. um, accomplished quite a bit since then obviously we t- we hit on the trials a little bit um talk to us about your big pr your 224 in uh yeah, that Coast. was in, yeah yeah that was in 2022 i ran the paris marathon that year which was like it was a great you know it was a fun race but it was very difficult like i should have done a little bit more research like going into that one like it was a women's only start and then it was very similar to like a new york i think you gain like eight or 900 feet of elevation. And I was just like, man, I I should have known that going in. So I kind of came off that. That was April. And I was like, oh, I want to do another marathon. Like, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I don't think the fitness showed as much in that one. So then I did um, Gold Coast, which I think was only, might have been like 12 weeks later, which is like a relatively quick turnaround. So like 
mini kind of training block for that and then went to Australia um, and ran the 224, which was um, which was fun. And that you won that marathon, right? She liked Australia. I think we I think you belong in Australia. <laughs> I, I love Australia. I know. And I don't know if you guys saw that they just changed um, the Sydney marathon course. Apparently, it's like a little bit more forgiving. They're starting it at six in the morning, so it's not as hot. So I was like, Australia is like just draw. It wants me to come back. I know. I hear that there's potential for that. If you run it and it does become a world major, you'll automatically still get your star. Oh, if you do it like the next couple of times. Not that you're collecting stars, uh, but, you know, I think that's cool. And hey, you mentioned your boss earlier, who I I know and love. uh, But does he also help? Like if you wanted to run a race, is he the one who gets you in that race? Um, so if it's an ASICs race, um, and it's like a high profile race, like a Tokyo or something where like everybody wants to do it. And I think like having the ASICs connection last year, um, and my agent also works with a lot of the Japanese, but it always helps. And I've done a lot of ASICs races, like Gold Coast is ASICs, Paris is ASICs. Um, what other ones are recently? I feel like I'm forgetting one that I like just did. Um, but yeah, Tokyo. Sydney's A6, yeah. Yeah. I know Falmouth, Cherry Blossom. Yeah, A6 has a ton of them. LA. Wait, Paris real fast, because I was just talking to someone who ran that. There was cobblestones, like a lot of them. Okay, so again, this is again me not knowing a lot about the course. But yeah, the last... (laughs) Oh, it was kind of mean. It was like a really, really hard course. And then the last like, I want to say it's like the last 5K was like all on cobblestones. And I was like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? This is so miserable. (laughs) Like I would, I would assume people fall. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, there was people that were just like, I mean, obviously people hit the wall in a marathon, but it was like, there was like, like the top runners in the world. They're like walking at this point. I was like, I don't blame you. This is really tough. (laughs) Like, Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. All, Sydney sounds good. Um, mm-hmm. Gold Coast sounds good. Australia. I think we just stick with Australia. Go to Australia. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, they just did um, LA Marathon too. Yeah. Right. But but what I was trying to get at, like a lot of times when you're doing a race, you can get either an appearance fee or a, you know, a bump, an incentive to come run certain races. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you work out on your own or is that something who, who, who manages those partnerships for you? Like, yeah, who comes to my, uh, yeah, my uh, agent, Brandon Riley, who's in um, Boulder, he's been great. Like he figures all that out because yeah, that's like the awkward part of it. You're like, Oh, I don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff. So it's nice when you just give that task to somebody else. Yeah, Does he come nice. to you with like a ticker tape and be like, here's your race options <laughs> uh, <laughs> for this spring? Or yeah. do you go to him and say, you know, I, I really would love to run this race. Do they have a budget for stars such as myself? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of me. Like, I love, I'll come with like so many options where he's like, you need to rein it in. You've got like 20 races you want to do. Uh, but I mean, we're already trying to figure out this fall, which is crazy. I'm like, it's March and we're already figuring out like September, October, like in the world championship standard just came out and it's a lot, it's, um, I want to say it's two twenty three thirty, so it's like okay, mm. like how where are we going to go to run that, and you know things Berlin. like that. So all that kind of plays into like your mind when you have to decide. Did did I hear you say Berlin? <laughs> Honest, Berlin's actually my last. Um, I'll get all my stars if I if I run Berlin. That's us so, too. Yeah, let's all do it this year. Let's all get our six stars. I know. Um, well, I did COVID London when it was. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was my favorite London, though, because that Sarah Hall kicked finish was uh, probably one of the most exciting finishes I have I can recall. There's that. And um, I'm going to forget the woman's name who just finished uh, the um, uh, Laz's race. Um, and now I'm blanking on everything. Oh, Paris? Yeah. You mean uh, Bar- Barclay? Barclay Marathon. Barclay yeah. Marathon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was what? Like Sunday. Didn't that just happen? Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Yeah. In- crazy. Insane. Um, how many years have you been with ASICs? I have been with ASICs since 2020. And then I actually uh, re-signed um, my contract. So I will be with them um, for four more years, which is really exciting. Oh, wow. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. So 2028, we got our shot at getting Lindsay Flanagan as a sponsored Believe in the Run athlete. <laughs> and, it's, yeah, it's great. and ASICs, is, they're so great to work with. I mean, you know, like, I feel like you guys yeah. are at all the functions now and um, 
yeah, it's just like, I feel lucky to be with a brand that like, obviously they care so much about my running, but they, they like care about me a lot as a person. And, um, yeah, I mean, they've all been great. I heard that they even took at the trials, they like took everyone to Epcot. I was like, that sounds like yeah. it was a great time. Yeah. We didn't get to go. Well, I was invited, but we had other plans, but, yeah. um, they're really nice to women. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're, they're, they're an amazing team. I How do you, you feel about social media? Cause I feel like that's now become like a expectation almost from some brands, but I don't like, do you have a pressure to do anything or is it kind of like whatever you want? Yeah. And I know that a lot of people do have that. And I was, it was interesting when I like re-signed my contract, obviously social media is a lot different now than 2020. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if there's going to be like, you need to post this or do this. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like, which is, amazing that they're like, Ben has always said, like, I care about performance. Like I care about like you being like beating people competing. Well, like for some reason for them, like social media, he's just like, never been like, this is something you need to like prioritize. I think, you know, what Ben's saying, which I think is interesting is your performance does more for ASICs than you showing a get ready with me video or something <laughs> like that. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I do think he's wrong about like whether or not you can pack a ASICs jacket faster than somebody else. <laughs> I think that's high quality content that, uh, you know, roll that beautiful footage, Megan. Um, the, um, anyway. I, did fail. I think I failed that challenge, but I nailed the trivia when we did it. You, you did, did nail the trivia. So impressed with your trivia. Jurassic In fact, Park was one of them. We should definitely do a trivia night and you're on my team. Yeah. We're doing it again, which is yeah. typically terrible at trivia. So I got really lucky that day. <laughs> Yeah, you you sold us off. I, I am curious though because I do love. I, I think that women's running has been so interesting because women have been more open about sharing on fa on social media and Instagram and everything like that. So you can kind of all of a sudden know the personality behind some of uh, of the runners. So I do feel that there's a fun part for the pro athlete to do it. But on the flip side. I feel like it can also be a distraction or even something that um, can throw your game off, especially if you're concentrating on doing that instead of the things that, you know, resting or, or whatever it is that you should be doing. Um, for you personally, how, how do you, how do you like to use social media? Yeah. And I mean, like you said, it is fun. Like you want people to feel like they can connect with you and you're not like this robot, like human being just like, like running these races. So I think it is important. Like, and it is, it's motivating. Like, I mean, I do like hearing other people's stories and seeing what they put out there. Like I've never been great at being like, Oh, look at me. Like, look at what I'm doing, but maybe I need to get better at that. Cause in my mind, I'm like, Oh, people don't really need to see this, but I'm like, no, maybe they do want to see it. Like they can like see my workout or like see what I'm doing. Like I'm not against sharing a lot of times the the thing is like, if I, I do a lot of workouts solo, I just don't have anyone getting the content. Right. Like, I would post content. I honestly just don't have anyone out there getting it. So you, um, need, you need somebody on a bike. <laughs> I do. And that's like when I was in Australia, I actually got like a decent amount of content because I was like with other people. But when I'm back here, I was like, I promise I'm running. I just don't, uh, I don't have anyone filming me. <laughs> so yeah, it says that if we don't see it, we don't know what's happening. You gotta, we gotta find someone who wants to ride a bike next to you. Capture yeah. it all. Otherwise, sure. you might as well just run 30 miles a week. <laughs> no, one, no one knows what you're doing. Um, okay, Lindsay, this has been super fun. I could chat to you all day long, um, but thank you for coming back on the podcast. I think you're only maybe like one of three people that have been on the podcast twice. Yes. Oh, so it, it means we really love you because yeah. we only bring people back that we like a lot. I think it's been Lindsay, Kira, and... Um, our drunk recap with Emma counts <laughs> yeah. too, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for yeah, having me. I can chat. I can talk with you guys all day. Like, we just need to go to the Sky Bar. Yeah, I like the this. Sky Bar. I, I or we'll think, fly to Australia together and talk for seventeen hours. Yeah, I great. don't think that the uh, trials would have been a good post drinking uh, interview for for you. <laughs> it would have been great for us. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. But, we'll uh, wait on that one. We'll do it again. We'll do another one. Yeah, yeah. we'll get yeah. another one for sure. All right. Well, thank you again for chatting with us. This was super fun. And um, I hope you get better soon and we see you on a start line. Yes. Thanks. And um, I hope I get to just like hang out with you guys again soon.